Hi, welcome back. We've got to the stage now where the alignment uh, is next on the agenda. And um, before going any further, I have to tell you that I've actually been messing around with this quite a bit because um, there were a few problems with that alignment, all the alignments. Um, the problem, the main problem, is that somebody went completely crazy with a screwdriver on this radio. So everything that could be twiddled was twiddled. Every single lug that someone could put a bloody screwdriver into, they did. And the results were quite disastrous. So much so that, as you noticed, and as I mentioned, the FM was practically completely gone. So this will give you a hint as to uh, the fact that I have got the FM back. Now, what I decided to do here to make this a little bit more interesting for myself and, and for anybody watching is to try a visual alignment of this, uh, the AM section at least, the IF alignment. I want to try a visual alignment without any fancy equipment. I mean, um, I know you're supposed to use a wobulator and you're supposed to use all sorts of uh, different um, types of RF sweep generators and so on and so forth, but I don't have those. I don't want to get those. This is not the purpose of why I have the hobby. Um, I like to make do with what I have. I like to build what I need. And uh, what I do have, I think, is more than enough for the purpose of this uh, experiment. So what I'm going to do is using a normal signal generator. This particular one goes up to 20, meg 20 megahertz. It's the one I always use. And it does have a sweep function. And using a normal oscilloscope, I want to do the IF alignment of the AM with a uh, to try and get the visual um, bell curve that we all try to achieve. And so far, all the alignments I've done have been measuring the speaker output, really, uh, sometimes the AGC voltage. But I've never really looked at it on the scope. It's always been measuring for a peak. And... I've always read and I've seen people do the alternative, which is uh, trying to shape the curve. And so that is my project today. So let me show you what exactly it is I'm after. So normally what you do when you want to do the IF alignment is you inject a signal here at the IF frequency, usually in uh, into pin 2 of the mixer tube, in this case ECH81, um, you inject a IF frequency uh, signal, 460 kilohertz in this case, AM modulated with a 500 or 600 uh, hertz signal, an audible signal, and you inject that through there, and then you have to adjust the IF transformers. Here's the first one for the AM, the top is for the FM, so you adjust the AM IF transformer there and also that one there. That's also the AM one. And you measure the result um, of the alignment on the strength of the audio signal that comes out of your speakers. So you literally put a AC voltmeter across your speakers and you measure that uh, amplitude. And you adjust those coils, those transformers, for a peak in the amplitude. And that means that your 460 kilohertz signal is going through there in an optimized fashion and your transformers are peaked for the IF frequency. Now, the other thing that happens is you can do it a different way, which I've done before, and that is to use the AGC voltage or AVC voltage. It's the automatic gain control signal that results from the strength of the AM carrier signal. So in this... Uh, tube here, the ABC80, one of these diodes, this thing's got three diodes, two of them are used for the detection of the FM, the other one is used for the AM, and the result here on pin six of that tube is a negative DC voltage, which comes out there, goes through there, through that coil, down there, through that resistor, comes out at pin five of this metal can, in this particular case, then it goes down, joins this uh, 1.5 meg resistor here, and then stabilized, smoothed by that capacitor there. And then that signal goes off to the grids of the various tubes to reduce or amplify 
their gain depending on the signal strength. The idea is that the weaker the signal, the lower the um, AGC voltage, so the higher the gain. So you take a weak signal and you amplify it more than you would a strong signal, therefore getting a constant gain, or rather a constant volume uh, level, and that's why it's sometimes called the automatic vo uh, volume control. But um, I, I prefer to call it the automatic gain control, because you're increasing the gain for weak signals and reducing the gain for strong signals. So if we measure this voltage here, this uh, AVC voltage at pin 5, it's a negative voltage, and the stronger the signal, the higher that negative voltage. The advantage of doing the alignment this way is that um, you actually don't have an effect of the AVC itself reducing the gain um, of the previous stages uh, when, you, when you're measuring. So if you, have, if you use the, the audio signal here, you have to use a very, very low level signal coming through because otherwise your AVC signal starts swamping the gain stages or the gain values of these uh, stages and it affects the result. Using the AVC, you have that advantage. You don't have to worry so much about that. The other advantage is that you don't have to blow your speakers or your ears or bother your family by having very loud tone signals coming out of your speaker. Uh, and that's really why I prefer this system. The one thing to be careful with, especially when you're adjusting for a visual curve on this, because what I'm trying to do here is to try and get a bell curve centered on the 460 kilohertz uh, IO frequency. But the one thing you have to be careful with is that this may not be as instantaneous um, as one might think because it's dampened by various capacitors along the way, especially this capacitor down here. The idea is that the AGC does not jump erratically up and down depending on the level of the signal because that means that the actual audio signal would affect the AGC too much and really mess up your gain. You want it to be fairly slow compared to the audio signal. So when you're measuring this AGC uh, by adjusting these uh, settings on the IF transformers, you have to do it fairly slowly, or at least you do it and you give it a, a, little, a little bit of time for the effect to be visible. And um, we're talking a very small lag, but it still does affect it. And it'll affect more if you set a sweep that's very, very fast. Uh, which is why we'll see the choices that I make in a, just, just ahead. Now, the idea is to try and get a visual alignment. What we do is we inject a signal in the same spot there. It'll be an AM signal, but it'll be swept from a frequency below the IF to a frequency above the IF and repeat itself infinitely or until you switch it off. Now, the idea is to use just a carrier signal, so that means that that signal is not modulated. We're not too worried about the actual audio that's going to come through. In fact, we're not, we're not listening to audio at all. We're looking for the effect of the varying voltage on the actual AVC voltage that's produced over there. Now, what the expected um, result is that you'll have a certain negative voltage, and as you get closer to the um, IO frequency, That'll be more negative. As you get away, go through it, you'll be at the peak. And as you get further away, higher than the IF frequency, it'll reduce again and become less negative. So you should get a negative bell curve like that. Um, and then you can adjust these transformers to make that more negative. In other words, peak it more. And also make sure that it's centered on the IF frequency. Um, if you wanted to get more bandwidth, in other words, if you wanted to get a more um, hi-fi result from your AM signals, which is not necessary these days, you would actually make that bottom curve of the bell curve a bit flat. Now, in this particular case, for AM, I'm not too worried about that because I'm not looking at uh, high-fidelity sound from AM. I don't get it anyway. So I'm not too worried about trying to make the bottom flat. I'm trying to make it as sensitive as possible, so as peaked as possible. All right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the uh, signal generator with a sweep. The sweep will be from a frequency below the IF to a frequency above the IF through a certain time period. 
and that's going to come into pin 2 of the mixer tube and then I'm going to set the scope at pin 5 and measure the resulting uh, AGC, the resulting voltage and when it sweeps I will look at that altering uh, uh, curve and adjust these transformers to get the best result. Now, how do I set that up? That's the next stage and I'll show you on each of the instruments how I come up with that without using the specific uh, type of sweep generators and, uh, and so on that one needs usually needs to set these things up. Just drawing out what it is I'm trying to do here is I'm going to have a frequency uh, scale here. I'm going to start our IF frequency is at 460 kilohertz. So let us say that I go down um, 60 kilohertz. So I start at 400 kilohertz. And let's say that I go to above the IF by 60, so I'm up to 520 kilohertz. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sig send a signal into the radio starting at 400 all the way through and going to 520. That's my sweep. Now the sweep is going to produce a negative voltage. And what I should see, if I take this down here, is I should see something like this. So I should see a negative voltage. Um, let us say that that is zero volts over there. Let's call that minus one. Let's call that just an arbitrary scale. Say minus five. I should see a negative voltage increasing, more negative, as the signal gets closer to the IF. And then reducing as it goes through the IF. Then it comes back and does this again. Back and does this again. So a few things here are important to, to try and see this on the type of equipment that I've got. The signal generator can produce the sweep, no problem. Okay, um, It produces the sweep and it also produces, when it's sweeping, it produces a sync signal. And that sync signal and in this particular uh, signal generator is something like, um, I believe it's a step. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's a step that does this, you know, something like that and then it'll step down again. So I can actually use the output, that sync signal at the back of the signal generator. I can use that to trigger my scope. So I use this as an external trigger of the scope. And I know that I can then get this to, to stand still on the screen as opposed to moving around. And the reason I wanted to stand still is because I need to know what frequency is showing up where. And this is where the grid of the oscilloscope comes in, and it also has to do with the timing that I use. The grid of the scope has six divisions. Um, to the left, there are six divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there are six divisions above. And that will be the end of the scope. So I've got six divisions below the center and six divisions above the center. So if I want this 460 to sit in the center, I need to ensure that the frequency that I start at and the frequency that I end at are equidistant from the center. So that's why I said 60 kilohertz below and there 60 kilohertz above. The reason I chose 60 kilohertz in this case is it also tells me, tells me A, that in the center here I'll be at 460 kilohertz, but it also tells me that each one of these is 10 kilohertz. So that's 460, that's 470, 480, and so on and so forth. Um, sorry, 410, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. 470, 480, 490, 5, 510, 520. So I can see if I look at the amount of signal I have here, I know that it is at, you know, 470 kilohertz. Um, if I have the peak right at the center of the grid, I know that I'm at 460. If this peak happened, happened to do this, I would know that I'm peaking at 465 and not at 460. So I could adjust that, all right? 
So first thing is equidistant from there. It doesn't have to be 10 per grid line. If I don't want to know exactly what the distances are, it does have to be equidistant from the center. So if I made this 100 hertz, uh, kilohertz below, I'd make that 100 kilohertz above. So I would always be able to use the center as my guide. Okay, that's the first thing. The other thing I'd do is um, I want this to fit this whole um, cycle, this one sweep from 400 to 520, or whatever it is. I want this whole sweep to fill my oscilloscope screen. Okay, so what I do is I make the I make the uh, the um, time span, the the time of the sweep, something that I can replicate on the scale on the time base of the oscilloscope. So I can actually do something like make the sweep 120 milliseconds and set the scope at 10 milliseconds per division. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 60. So I've got 120 milliseconds there, and my sweep is 120 milliseconds as well. I can make it 1.2 seconds, make that 100 milliseconds per division, and so on and so forth. This is just to make it visually more readable and more understandable, okay? Um, the other thing that I prefer to do is I prefer to take this scope signal and instead of getting a negative curve, I invert it. So I actually get something like that. So I invert the signal on the scope and it just makes it easier to read. Okay, that's just neither here nor there. You don't have to do that. But that's basically what we're going to do. And then when we adjust the, um, the lugs of the IF uh, transformers for the AM section, we will get this thing either being lower, higher, being more centered, uh, more to the left, more to the right, more to the center. My idea is to get it as high as possible and as close as possible to that center and preferably a nice, even and um, mirrored shape, a good shape to that curve, okay? So I'll show you now how I set up the actual signal generator and then the scope and then we'll see what we're actually getting. So let's set up the sweep generator, or the generator first. What I'm going to do is select sweep mode. And I'm going to set the start level at 400 kilohertz, the stop level at 520, as discussed, and my time at 120 milliseconds. Okay. The other thing to be careful with, and this took me a while to, to figure out, is make sure that it's a linear sweep and not a logarithmic sweep. You can actually get log sweeps. Um, I want a linear sweep, so I'd be able to determine exactly what the frequency is where, depending on where it is on the grid. So that is my trigger, that is my uh, sweep uh, signal, and I've set this to as low as I can go on this particular signal generator, which is formerly volts peak to peak. So that's my signal set up, and when I press that down there, it activates it and starts the sweeping, okay? What it also starts doing is sending a sick, uh, sync signal out to the back, uh, ex the output at the back of this uh, generator. And that sync signal is what I'm going to use as the external trigger of the oscilloscope. So my signal generator signal comes out, comes into this uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor, that's just for DC coupling, and then it goes into pin 2 of the mixer tube, which is the ECH81. The negative of the signal generator is connected to ground. I've also got channel 1 of the scope connected to pin 5 over there on the bottom of that can. And the reason I know that's pin 5 is because there's a drawing of it on the data sheet. Again, the negative of the scope connected to ground. The radio is set to medium wave. So the first thing we need to do is to ensure that we're using the uh, trigger signal coming out of the back of the signal generator as the external trigger for the scope. We need to ensure that we have selected external trigger, which is what we've done here. We then go to channel 1. On channel 1, DC coupled. Um, and in this case, I've used the inverted on, so it's inverted to give us that uh, vertical bell curve, all right? 
And what we have here now is with no signal coming out of the signal generator, we've got a negative voltage. It's positive here because it's inverted, but it's about 376 millivolts. Now this is the normal AGC voltage coming out of the radio with no signal coming in. Okay. Now, if I switch on the sweep generator, watch what happens. Now, what I need to do, just move this guy down. Change the scale. And there it is. So I've got the signal more or less stable. The triggering is a little bit iffy now and then, but um, I can see the 460 straight in the middle there. Starts at 420, sorry, at 400 and ends at 520. Now, if I want to expand this to see it a bit more clearly, I can do it like this, but more accurately, I'd uh, reduce the span of the actual um, uh, sweep. So I'm going to start sweeping instead of uh, 60 kilohertz below, I'm going to start sweeping, say, 12 kilohertz below. That'll make each of these divisions 2 kilohertz. So I'll start at 448. With 460 in the middle, I need to make that 472. So let's do that. 448 kilohertz. Stop at 472 kilohertz. And there's my bell curve. Pretty nice. Pretty centered. I know that's 448. I know that's 2 kilohertz per division, I know that's 460, and I'm slap bang in the middle there. And obviously this is the result of the work I did before, because it doesn't happen to fall in that position automatically. Believe me, it doesn't. And um, to show you the effect of, of uh, playing with the, uh, or adjusting the IF transformers, I'm going to make a few adjustments just to show you what happens to the curve. Now, I'm going to the first one from below. and tweaking a bit and look what happens that's just a very slight rotation and that's what it did to the curve so you can see how easy it is to detune a radio now let me go back the other way and I'm about where I was before if I keep going I get that it shifts all frequency let me go back That's about it. Let me try the top end of that same IF transformer. Yeah, it shifts out. Bring it back. Back to where it was, slightly off to the other side. And there it reduces dramatically, so I have to go back the other way. Now you've got to do this slowly. You've got to literally twist a little bit and wait for the result. There we are, back to where we were before. I'm going to try the other transformer, show you the result. One way, reduces, come back, more or less to where we were, and the other way, right down. And that is less than a quarter of a turn on that uh, coil. There we are, back to center. So you see, we've actually effectively tuned this using a visual um, system, which is a lot cooler than doing this with uh, just a multimeter. I'm going to do one more adjustment here, and that is I'm going to make this one kilohertz per division. So I'm going to start at... Uh, 460 minus 6 kilohertz, so 454, and I'm going to stop at 466. So again, what I've done is I've just widened it. This is the same sweep, but um, sweep time anyway, and it's uh, 6 kilohertz either way. So you can see, effectively, we can see what, uh, what the bell curve is doing in one kilohertz steps. So that there is 460, 459, 458, and so on and so forth. And 460, 461, 462, 463. If anything, this thing is just slightly to the right. 
So this is actually peaked not at 460, but say at 460.5 kilohertz. It doesn't really matter um, because what you, any negative effects you might have here is in your uh, actual RF alignment because your IF doesn't really have to be exactly 460. It's only got to be 460 um, so that it corresponds to the IF alignment that's in place. But if you adjust this and you adjust the, R the RF alignment and you align everything else with the scale, so when you tune to 1000 kilohertz, you're seeing 1000 kilohertz, you're getting the signal there, you just adjust that RF alignment and that'll compensate for any slight um, change in the peaking of this IF. So there we go, that's the um, IF alignment of the AM bands of this radio. It's now as peaked as it can be on the AM. The reception is great, I'll show you in a future video. Um, I'm going to cut this one off for now because the bigger challenge is the uh, FM and I'm not so sure I can do the same thing with the FM here because I believe that I can't get See, this is 460, but for the FM, I need 10.7 megahertz over here. And I need to have the same sort of signal um, matching or rather syncing over here. And I've been getting a message from the signal generator saying that it can't sync at that frequency. I need to just look into that because I'd like to do exactly the same thing here. I really like this method. It's more intuitive. It shows you exactly what's happening. It teaches you a bit more about what you're doing. And that's the whole purpose of uh, tube radio restorations as a hobby. Um, that's about really what, what it's good at. It's certainly not a business. It's, it's, it's a hobby and you've got to learn as you go along and uh, impart some of that knowledge if you can to anybody who's doing the same thing. So that's it for now. And I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed that.